Hey guys, just thought I'd show you some of the tools, sort of the bare minimum. You're going to need a acrylic adhesive. There's different ones out there. It has to be water thin. Okay, it's not a glue. It's, it just melts the acrylic. You're going to need an applicator. This is 25 gauge. You're going to want to fill your bottle about one third full. You don't squeeze it. You let the fluid creep out and be drawn by capillary action into the joint. And then it fuses it, draws it down. You're going to want cleaner because you're going to be peeling parts and you're going to be cleaning every part of the part. And you're going to need microfiber cloths, clean ones. Okay guys, I'm going to show you a little bit about gluing parts up. So for instance this part is going to be glued only on this side, so I only have to peel the part of the paper where the going to have any glue in the area. Okay, make sure everything's nice and smooth. Okay, and you spritz the rag, and you wipe the area down, and then you dry it. Very simple. Since this is the part that's going to have a part glued to it, I'm just going to lay it up against something that gives me a perpendicular. I happen to have my table saw here. It makes a nice, handy, dead 90 degree place to work. But you can use a lot of different things to do the same. And then you peel the paper off this part. This is the part that's going to get glued onto the other part. Again, spritz the rag, okay, wipe the whole part down, dry it, polish it off, make sure it's dry, okay, see where you want it, see what you got, and then you place it up here like that, and you can use another part to make sure that these parts are and flush. Okay, they were cut off the same sheet, so that helps make them the same size. And you take your little plasticator needle here, and you touch it to it, and if you, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but the fluid just creeps along wonderfully. Now, if you start doing this and you start having trouble, and it doesn't seem like your glue is getting under there like you want, almost always there's a micro burr from you sanding. You sand these parts and you make them flat and you go, oh this is beautiful. Then you find out that the problem is there's a little tiny burr there that's melting and keeping the fluid from going through. So you have to take your sandpaper and take that little burr off. It's part of your sanding process. You sand everything and you deburr it as well. So that's gluing apart. Okay, the next step that I need to do is make two of the, these two parts identical. So I tape them together so that wouldn't be an issue. And then I'm just going to run them through the bandsaw because that's a lot less aggressive than, for instance, the power miter saw or whatever. And what I'm after here is that same split the difference chamfer there. And I'm just going to eyeball it. touch up on the sander to take the massive grooves out of it that the coarse blade does. Okay. okay, and like the table saw, the sander also has a tilt base thing, so theoretically, you know, this will line right up onto it, and as long as I'm very gentle with it, I can get the heavy scratches out of it.
It's all hand sanding stuff. So I go over someplace nice like this. And I set up my little sanding block. Like this, and I work away at it, trying to keep it very uniform. To give you some idea of all the little steps you have to go through just to make a little, it looks like a nothing. A little float of her. Should take two seconds to make, right? Okay? You're going to cut the parts, sand the parts, glue the parts, and then if you do any shaping like this, you know, you've got to leave marks and you've got to cut them off too. Get the sand, cut off all the coarse marks until it's nice and fine again. Get that nose, get the nose right. This is, this is 220, so this is just the beginning. There's more of this until it's good enough to polish. Okay. And these little guys are going to fit over top of the ports in the back of the reservoir. One on each side, glued to the side, glued to the bottom, glued to the back. So they have to be dead 90. They have to. Everything has to fit perfectly. So, you know, I don't know how to stress it enough, but you've got to have some way of assuring that this 90 degree doesn't change and that this 90 degree doesn't change because it has to meet the back of the reservoir and the side and the bottom. <laughs> you've got 90, 90, 90, 90. 490s that you have to keep track of as you sand. So a lot of it is your technique and how you put pressure on the part or not. You know what I mean? You know, as you as you're pushing it in there, are you pushing it the same amount? Are you getting the same amount of removal from one end to the other? And if you use a sanding block like this. Fixture, you can keep getting new areas to work. And this is just, you know, what's involved, at least for me, the way I do it. I, I work as neatly and carefully as I can to get everything to work. I want it all to fit the way it's supposed to. This is not that critical because this is. This is actually just, you know, out there in the water. This actually has to meet something. So, so I'll save you the rest of that tedium, guys. But I've got plenty more of that to do. And then I'll show you some more assembly. More little phases and steps. Hey guys, there was just one more little step to this little part that I'm making. The little flow diverter for the in and out ports on the back of the reservoir. I don't want a bubble. You may have seen in certain reservoir designs if there's a flow diverter without a little hole in the top of it, a bubble will just get trapped and rotate around in there and it's very annoying. <coughs> it can happen when you're filling it. You can trap air in there or something. 
So what I'm doing is I'm taking my acrylic fit here, my little part that I've just about finished. Okay, making a nice hole okay, in the center of that channel. Come over here and watch me do this part. And I'm going to take my cordless drill here. Let me back this back a little bit so you can see the whole action. Take my cordless drill here and on low speed, just going to comb it out so the bubble will have a good way out. Flip it over and comb the other side the same way. Doesn't have to be much, I just want to make an easy path for it. So, let me show you the little finished part here, which I think you can see pretty good. Okay, the front edge has been polished. See? Okay. It's going to glue to the bottom side and back. And ports back mm -hmm. here. And so if air did get trapped in there for whatever reason while filling, it would have a place to go. Okay. And the hole is not small enough to really totally affect the flow. It actually would act like a venturi and it would draw fluid in with it and push it out. Same this way. So that's what you get little part after much fiddling about. Okay.